Balloon 1, the three introduction to balloon flight training. You know how flying involves a lot of split-second decisions, right? Aeronautical decision-making is like the secret sauce for pilots. It's this systematic way of figuring out the best moves based on what's happening up in the air. And guess what? It's a game-changer because it tackles the human factor, which is a big deal in keeping things safe. Apparently, a whopping 90% of balloon accidents are because of, you guessed it, human factors. ADM isn't reinventing the decision-making wheel. It's more like an upgrade. It gives pilots a roadmap to analyze changes during a flight and how those changes might shake things up. It's about spotting attitudes that could mess with safe flying, dealing with stress because flying can be stressful. Who knew? Getting good at sizing up risks and making sure your ADM skills are top-notch. Now, ever heard of hazardous attitudes? They're like those pesky thoughts that mess with good pilot judgment. The trick is to recognize them, call them out as hazardous, and then hit back with the right antidote. Stress is also on the radar. Whether it's emotional, physical, or behavioral stress, pilots need to know how to handle it. And speaking of risks, studying accident reports, like the ones from the National Transportation Safety Board, NTSB, can help pilots assess risks better. Fun fact. Over 90% of balloon mishaps happen during landings, especially in windy conditions. So it's like, check yourself before you wreck yourself, right? Once you're certified, the learning doesn't stop. There are these what-if chats between instructors and student pilots where they throw hypothetical scenarios into the mix, and pilots are encouraged to keep the self-evaluation going. Ask questions, review decisions, brainstorm alternatives, and figure out if you went with the best solution. Now, aeronautical decision-making has a cool counterpart known as crew resource management in the airline world. It's all about using every available resource to prevent accidents. You know, when it comes to flying, especially in a balloon, there's this cool concept called single pilot resource management. It's like the art and science of juggling everything, both onboard and external stuff, to make sure your flight is a success. And let's face it, most of us balloon folks are solo pilots, so there's no fancy crew to share the workload. Now, single pilot resource management is all about integrating different thinking skills to make the best decisions during a flight. It throws in concepts like human resources, risk management, situational awareness, training, and the decision-making process. Let's unpack a bit. Human resources in ballooning are a bit different than in regular airplanes. We rely on a bunch of people like crew chiefs, ground crew, weather briefers, volunteers, and even the locals who know the scoop on roads and landing spots. Crew members play a big role, and their actions or inactions can be just as crucial to safety as the pilot's decisions. It's a team effort, even if legally the pilot is the big boss. And here's the irony. While the law says the pilot is the final authority, we all know every pilot needs a crew and they're not certified or recognized by anyone official. It's like this invisible team that every pilot leads. So recognizing the crew's skills is key to safe flight planning and decision making. Now let's talk risk management. Flying has its risks, right? To stay on the safe side, pilots need to be pros at judging and minimizing those risks. There's this cool perceived process perform model that lays out a structured way to manage risk. You start by looking at hazards, then process the risk levels, and finally figure out how to manage it, whether by transferring it, eliminating it, accepting it, or mitigating it. During a flight, it's all about decisions, especially the big one, go or no go. You're constantly evaluating the pilot, the balloon, the environment, and the operation. Like, are you in top shape to fly? Is the balloon in good shape? What's the environment like? Weather, terrain, obstacles? And why are you even making this flight? Is it worth the risks? And here's the thing. It's not just about what's happening during the flight, but even before you lift off. Are you feeling well? Did you get enough sleep? Maybe you're planning a morning flight after a night-long drive. Tired, achy, maybe coming down with a cold. Should you really be up there? Or let's say you're up in the air in the afternoon, and the terrain below is mostly swampland, and the sun's about to set. The wind is dropping, but landing spots are getting sparse. Do you keep going or call it a day? And weather, oh boy, that can throw curveballs. You get a weather briefing that says no precipitation, but there's a slight drizzle and distant thunder. Do you trust the briefing or land as soon as possible? The whole single pilot resource management game is about making these calls, weighing the risks, and being smart about it. It's a bit like being your own boss and having to make split-second decisions that can make or break your flight. Let's delve into situational awareness in flying. It's about having a comprehensive understanding of all factors before, during, and after a flight. You need to grasp the significance of these factors and how they'll play out in the future. 
When you've got that situational awareness going, you're basically on top of the whole operation. But you know, it's not all smooth sailing. There are things that can throw a wrench into maintaining that situational awareness. Stuff like fatigue, stress, and being overloaded with work can mess with your radar. Then there's complacency, getting too comfy and thinking you've got it all figured out. And don't forget classic traps like pushing too hard to meet flight goals. Maintaining situational awareness means being quick on the draw, switching between different info sources and tasks, and still keeping an eye on the bigger picture. The more experienced pilots have a leg up because of their, well, experience. But even the rookies can level the playing field with the right core competencies from their training. Now let's talk about decision making. Sure, when emergencies pop up, we've got procedures to follow, but there are those situations that need a bit more thought. Like the ability to look at changes during a flight, gather info, assess risks, and then make a call. That's the decision making process. First up is defining the problem. It's like recognizing that something's changed or didn't happen the way it should. This gut feeling, combined with checking all available info, helps nail down what's up and how bad it is. Then comes choosing a course of action. You've identified the problem. Now you gotta figure out if it's worth reacting to and what actions need to be taken. You're basically weighing the expected outcomes and assessing the risks before making a move. But hold on, making a decision isn't the end of the road. You gotta think ahead and see how your decision might ripple through the rest of the flight. It's a continuous loop of evaluating outcomes and adjusting as needed. There are models to help pilots in this decision-making loop. One of them is the decide model. Detect, estimate, choose, identify, do, and evaluate. It's a six-step process that guides pilots in a logical way, like a mental checklist to ensure you're covering all bases. Then there's the OODA loop, which stands for observation, orientation, decision, and action. It's this loop that keeps feeding back into itself, giving you continuous updates on what's happening. Like you observe, orient yourself to any discrepancies, decide on an action, take that action, and then go back to observing. It's a cycle that keeps you in the loop and aware of what's happening around you. So flying's not just about handling the controls, it's about being on your toes, understanding the situation, and making smart decisions.